Hello guys, today we're going to have a deep talk about many-to-many -many relationships and pivot tables in Eloquent and Laravel. And I will show you a simple example, then we get more complex and more complex to customizing pivot tables, adding timestamps, adding another model and stuff like that. So for those of you who are not that familiar, you will learn about pivot tables. And for those of you who use that, maybe you will learn a thing or two which you didn't know before. And this is an example of a pivot table of a many-to-many -many relationship between projects and users. So every project may have many users, and at the same time, every user may have many projects. That's why it's many-to-many. -many. And let's go to the code. How did I create the migrations? First, migrations. Users table comes from default Laravel. I didn't change anything here. Then projects table is a new table. With our case, it's only one column name. Nothing really fancy here. But this is the pivot table, the intermediate table between those two. And there are a few things that you need to know here. First, the name of the table, project user. To be able to use full Laravel eloquent magic, as I call that, there are specific rules how to call that table. It should be alphabetically, so it cannot be user project. Also, it has to be singular, so it cannot be projects users. So basically, you take two tables, order them alphabetically, and singular. And that should be the table name of pivot table. And then columns also have to have name of singular of that table underscore ID. And by the way, this syntax for an ID came with Laravel 7. So before we had to write two lines of code for every column, so column and foreign key, and now it became foreign ID with constraint. Now, how does that look in the model? We have project model. And this is how we describe belongs to many relationship. If we described everything correctly, as I mentioned here with names, then we don't need to add any parameters to here. It's a short one liner. And then if you want to add a user to a project, I will show that in a seeder. So I've seeded some data, I've seeded 10 projects. And for every project, I've seeded three random users. But this is the line where you actually attach the user to the project. And this is the main benefit of that many-to-many -many relationship configuration, that then you can use Eloquent and Laravel functions and write small amount of code. And under the hood, it will take care of all of the relationship and all of that. And then I've created a page, Home Blade, which just lists the project with their users. It's just webphp file to home controller. And let's open home controller. It's just project with users get. And in the browser, it looks like this. So list of the projects and list of the users for every project. So this is more or less the basics of many to many and pivot tables. And now let's go deeper. First, customizing this thing. What if you do want to name the table in a different way? then you need to configure that. So for example, let's create that projects users and then the field will be projects ID, users ID. I don't advise that, but maybe you do have that table already from somewhere. So let's say you have these names and then in the many to many relationship here, you need to specify the table name, projects users, then field of projects ID and the field of users ID. My font is probably too big in PHP Storm here now. So this is how you define that. And let's re-migrate and reseed all the data and see if it doesn't break. So we have PHP artisan migrate fresh seed. All good here. In the database, let's refresh the tables. We have projects users. And in home, no error, new data. So if you specify everything correctly in the belongs to many relationship, then you can name your table or columns however you want. And now let's add more things to our pivot table one by one and we will go deeper and deeper. First, timestamps. As you can see here in the database table, there's no timestamp. But maybe you do want to know when that project was assigned to some user. To do that, you need to do two things. Migration, you need to add the timestamps column columns actually, timestamps, and then in the relationship, you define that with timestamps. And then if we again migrate fresh seed, it should see the data refresh with timestamps by default. And now what if we want to show the timestamps here, so when that user was created or attached to the project in fact. To do that in the blade file, we will add this so user pivot created at 
If you want to work with any additional column in your pivot table, this is the keyword. So you have project users, and then from user, you call the pivot table, the intermediate one. And let's refresh. This is the result. But what if we want to add more fields, not only timestamps, some custom fields? For example, if that project is the main for that user, so is the user the leader of that project manager or something? So we add a field again, probably the same thing. So with timestamps, we add table, boolean, for example, is manager, and default false. So that's migration. Then in the relationship, we need to specify with pivot, and then we add array of fields, which would be additional in that pivot table. So in our case, it's one thing, it's manager. And then when attaching the user to the project, so in here in the seeder, we may specify additional fields. And for that, we will attach the user one by one. So for each users as user, we will go attach one user with parameter is manager equals let's put random zero one and let's recede that success and let's see what we have in our pivot table now we have a new field is manager which is randomly zero or one and same thing if you want to show that somewhere is manager and let's refresh the page zero or one here so this is how you add any custom field to that pivot table next thing is maybe for some reason you don't like that name pivot maybe it's not that readable for people who don't know laravel so you can rename that while specifying your relationship here you can specify as and you can rename that to whatever you want so for example project user and then you do project user here. So whenever you need that pivot table columns, you just specify project user because that's how you would name that. And if we refresh, nothing changes, it's all working. Next thing, what if we want to specify a specific relationship to managers only? So we need to get only managers. So we can add a condition to our relationship, or in fact, we'll create a second relationship, not users, but managers, so managers still belongs to many we will remove that name and add where pivot and this is the same as adding where condition so is manager one and now if we query the managers with project not users but managers we have another relationship right then we can do for each project managers as user and we don't need to specify that and let's see what we have as you can see, this project doesn't have a manager and this has two managers, but you get the point. You see only managers here. So you can specify two relationships separately like this one. And also there are two methods which I won't show here, but there's where pivot in and where pivot not in. So for example, if you have not a Boolean, but any other field like integer, you would be able to have something like that. So column, for example, priority of project is one or two. And final thing, you've probably noticed that during this video we didn't create special model for the pivot table. So there is a model project, model user, and they somehow tie together. But if you want to perform some operations on the pivot table specifically, sometimes it does make sense to create a model. And there is a specific type of model called pivot. So we can do something like artisan make model project user. And if we open project user, as a model, we need to rename that to pivot. Pivot. And that's it. Why would you do that? What would be the use case? Let's change our manager field to the relationship to actual managers. So let's assume that every project and every user has their own manager or supervisor within that project. And that would be relationship to user table. And in our blade, we would like to show every project, every user, and their own manager there. So let's do exactly that. In migrations, we changed boolean is manager to foreign id manager id. And instead of constraint, now we reference reference id on users. So we have that manager id 
then in the relationship we don't have that is manager and let's remove that one as well and we will add using using and we need to specify the class which is project user class and then we can add something like eloquent stuff to the project user including public function manager which will be relationship returns this belongs to user class with foreign key manager id now in the cedar let's change manager id to user in random order first and id let's reseed that seems successful let's check the database now and we have our manager id and now let's show that manager to the list we add with pivot so we need to specify that we have that field manager id and then in the blade instead of that manager we will add supervisor so change that to users and then we can add user pivot manager name so see what is happening here project has users user is calling the pivot pivot is calling the manager relationship and then the name and this is the result so that's how you can use a separate model for the pivot table and then inside of that model you can have relationships so that was an overview of pivot table structure various customizations and additional less known features if you are hungry for more on the same topic of eloquent i have a special course called eloquent expert level it's available on teachable and the link is here so in that course i go through a lot of customizations of eloquent in general not only pivot table so you can check that out also subscribe to the channel hit the bell button to be notified of new videos by email and see you guys in other videos